from the big British castle, coming live from the Glastonbury Festival. We're inside a special area with great big walls, so the weirdos and the hoolies can't get through to go to the loo. Very good. That was Vampire Weekend with Cape Cod Kwasa Kwasa. Was that the real version, James? Yes, that was the real. That wasn't live or anything, no. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because the quality of live music here is so brills. It's so absolutely brills. The bands are very well trained and yes. drilled. They're it's drilled good. to be brills. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Adam and Joe coming to you live from the Glastonbury Festival. I'm Joe. I'm Adam. And uh, I'm a little bit disturbed to see that uh, you can actually watch us in, you know, with, with quite a lot of clarity on the studio webcams. It's slightly unsettling. There's live streaming going on. Ooh, we look. don't really like it. Adam and I got into radio in order to, you know, just sort of get ugly and old in private. Yeah, exactly. But now we're being exposed to the world and it's troubling. So we're going to put our sunglasses on. Yeah. We're inside a very, very small studio here, right next to the pyramid stage in the middle of the Glastonbury Fair. And inside the studio, it's been festooned with uh, bits of foliage. Is it real foliage or is it plastic it foliage? Must be, if it was plastic foliage, that would be a disgrace for the BBC. It would, it, not, it would be a lie. It would not be safeguarding it would be a scandal. botanical trust. It is plastic foliage. That's a disgrace. That's a disgrace. Grace. That's going to be all over the papers tomorrow. All over the papers. Lying public, public money spent on fake, fake flowers. flowers. A charade. A travesty. You know, we may as well go out there with those flowers and smack people in the face. Yes, let's do that. Let's find a mother and her children Adam. and smack them in the face what with you... fake flowers. Hey, hey what, come on. Have I gone too far? This is the first link and you've gone, gone way, way too, too far. far. <laughs> you know Pull what? Pull it back, quickly. Here's the thing, right? Later on in the show, I'm going to tease some stuff, Joe. Later on in the show, we're actually going to be talking to a real family. Wow. Uh, some grown-ups and their children who have come to the Glastonbury Festival. Are they the, the the special Glastonbury family? Are they a six music thing? They're the six music Glastonbury family, and they're, uh, they're going to be telling us about the festival as experienced by a sort of classic nuclear family. They're a real right? family, though, right? They're not actors pretending to be a family. <laughs> Which would be weird. They're a real family. We're going to be talking to them later on. I'll be genuinely interested to find out how they've been getting on because the more I come to Glastonbury, the more I think I would never bring my family mm. here. In a million years, I would never bring children here, tiny children. I saw a family with a good technique yesterday. They had all their kids in a wheelbarrow. Right. And they were just wheelbarrowing them around the site. Yeah. You know, that's quite a good way to do it, isn't it? That's good, yeah. That's like um, in the stock market crash when people used to wheel around barrows of money. Yes. And now in it's... In what way is it like that? The wheelbarrow. There's barrow. a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> good one. And no, that's good. That's Listen. like... Also, it's like in gardening. Yes. When they use a wheelbarrow. Yeah. I'm yep, just yep. trying to... No, you're good. You haven't gone far enough now. No. Listen, if you want to check out our peculiar faces on the uh, live streaming thing, you can go to bbc.co.uk slash Glastonbury. There's all sorts of interactive coverage there. Are there cameras on some of the stages and stuff? I mean, you really don't need to pay for a ticket, do you? No. You can enjoy the whole thing, courtesy of the BBC. It's actually very nice now. The sun is out. There's, a, there's some cloud around, but it's worked out pretty nicely. I was very worried about the weather situation. Oh, I was very worried as before well. Before we arrived, because I don't like discomfort. We've got the brains of babies. Yeah. You know how they say that when something happens to a baby when it feels pain, they think it's going to continue for the rest of their life. Right. That's why they cry for so long and so yeah. loudly. They don't understand that it'll pass. That's like me and Joe. And the weather, yeah, we just think when it rains it's just going to be like that <laughs> forever. <laughs> Stop raining! So when I saw the forecast before we arrived at Glastonbury, I just thought, mm. this is going to be awful. I don't like mud and rain and discomfort. You know what? It's turned out very nice. I missed all the thunder and lightning that was Man, I'd say it's night. changeable. You I'd reckon? say anything can happen today, yeah. Don't say that. Well, i just got to get you psychologically prepared for another deluge. Changeable? Listen, let's play some music right now, and uh, we've got some doves for you. They were playing... Is this from this festival? Yeah, yesterday. Uh, they were playing on the Peel stage here at Glastonbury. And uh, this is live track A. <laughs> it's called Black and White Town. Here's there the dove. Go. That was Doves. Dot six music. They were live on the Peel stage yesterday here at Glastonbury 2009. That's where we are. This is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. I'm just trying to remember the interactive information. Are we taking text today? 64046. That's the text number. We're, we're going to do it. What? Yeah, he's giving me the thumbs up. I've got the number correct. And the website... No, the email address? What is this? adamandjoe.6music.code at... Oh, dear. Adam and Joe. Oh, well, I'll do this later. Look, I can't remember. We haven't got our correct pieces of paper here. adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Yeah, there you go. Well done, Count Buckley. Jimmy Skillpants. 
So how was the rest of your week before you got to Glastonbury, Joe? Uh, it was all right. Yeah, it was good, actually. You, you sprung that on me. I, I, I kind Sorry. of forgotten about it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about our week. We're not just going to talk about Glastonbury for this no. show, because, you know, it is uh, a regular show. There's some people who not only aren't interested in Glastonbury, but hate what? Glastonbury. What? Hate Glastonbury. That's not true. I'm just joking. Um, but earlier in the week, I, we, there was a big, exciting thing happening at our house, because we had the premiere of E.T., the new film by Steven Spielberg. What, you were showing it to your kids for the first time? For the first time. Wow. Kid premiere of E.T. Really? W did you project it, maybe, with a yeah. video projector? You did? Yeah, absolutely. Surround sound? Uh, surround sound. Well, maybe it wasn't released in surround sound. It might have just been released in stereo back in the day. Yeah, well, we, well I cranked it up, though, did on you? the speakers. Closed the curtains. Yeah. And, uh, they didn't really like me closing the curtains. It's too scary. Too creepy. I mm. forgot how frightening the beginning is, like, how creepy it is. He's got weird sort of sci-fi music on the top there, almost like a horror film. Uh, it's not all the John Williams... I mean, it obviously is John Williams, but it's not the happy mm. over-the-moon theme and the main... Mm. Da -da 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 -da. No, it's mysterious and the mysterious creatures scuttling. You yeah. don't see E.T.'s face for a while, do you? No, certainly not. You just see his little legs and him scooting around the cornfield and stuff. And it's amazingly suspenseful. You don't even see the faces of the adults, you just see their belts and that's the, right. the keys. Well, he, that the... character is called Keys. Is he? That's yeah, right. Yeah, Peter, Co Peter Coyote's character. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's really quite um, scary. And, and my youngest, who is about five, yeah. was a little bit freaked out by the beginning bit. Right. And sort of buried his face in the pillow. I had to absolutely promise him that it was going to be nice. Tiny glowing turd man. Yeah. Scuttling about. Who wouldn't be frightened? He didn't like it. But then, you know, he got used to it after a while. And then my eldest, who's about seven, he was much more into it. He was digging it. There's some smutty dialogue in there. Uh, there's or one... was this the revised version? No, I showed them the original theatrical. There is some smutty dialogue. Has he removed the smutty dialogue in the revised version? Uh, possibly. They say penis breath, don't they? Yeah. And you right. know, I'm confident in saying that on Six Music in the Morning because... It's a gynecological term. Say, yeah, if he says it in, in a use certificate film, then yeah. it's got to be fine. That's right. Right? Absolutely right. What, right. Good call, Joe. Producer James. <laughs> Very good call. <laughs> Just taking that as read. Yeah. Uh, and they, they chuckled at that utterance. It, who wouldn't? Um, Imagine. I don't think they stored it away in their locker. Good. That would have been upsetting if they unveiled it. locker. If they'd unveiled it on Monday morning yeah. uh, at school. I don't think so. But by the end of the film, they were sort of drifting a little bit. And it, it occurred to me that they just weren't used to seeing a film with that level of emotional weight. Do you know what I mean? They, they've they been raised on, like, they saw Iron Man and things like that. They probably, you would think they would be too young to see Iron Man, but they absolutely loved it. And they loved Transformers and all that kind of stuff. But there's no sort of emotional heft to those films. There's no... Well, modern children, they don't feel emotion. Right. Yeah, no, that's actually, scientists have concluded that, that they're stone cold. They're absolutely... Emotionless monsters. That's why they like Transformers. According to the tabloids, exactly. Because they are <laughs> robot people. Let's face it. <laughs> so I felt as if they weren't really responding to some of the emotional moments as mm. well as they might. I mean, the fact is that they were probably a little bit too young, right? I saw it when I was... To understand loss. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So by the time they got to the end, the big emotional farewell scene, right, when he's saying goodbye, and, mm. and I am sat there on the sofa watching it with them, and I hadn't seen it for a while. You're choking up. I had a terrible sore throat trying not to just cry in front of them. Mm. And it reminded me of when I was young and watching it for the first time with, with my mum in the cinema. And I remember after we, we got up and, and left the cinema the first time I saw it, there was everyone was just in floods of tears. They were just weeping. There's a generator going on outside, don't worry, listeners. But um, it wasn't quite the same for, for, for the children, you know? They didn't have quite the same reaction to it. In fact, Frank just said at one stage, <laughs> he's hugging an alien. <laughs> <laughs> so that just may be because he's a Buxton Yeah, possibly, <laughs> I don't know But anyway, that's what happened with us Let's play some more music right now uh, Who have we got coming up? Have we got a bit of Noah and the Whale? Yeah, yeah. this is uh, from the Park stage yesterday And it is, what, do we know what it's called? Five years, yeah, here it is Noah and the Whale recorded live here at Glastonbury yesterday uh, That was terrific, wasn't it? Adam very, Buxton. very good indeed, yes. We haven't really seen much live music yet because we've just been doing our six music duties. We saw a little bit of the specials yesterday. A little bit of the specials. They we heard a little good. bit of Neil Young. A uh, little bit of Neil Young, just as we were leaving, though. I watched it on the TV when we got back right. to our hotel because we're not camping. We're too old. Yeah. <laughs> but we did speak to some people who were camping yesterday, and this is what happened. BBC Six Music, live from Glastonbury 2009, with Adam and Joe.
Okay, we are within what feels like about five centimetres of a huge bank of incredibly smelly toilets. Yes, there is a stench of human faeces in the area, but that hasn't put off the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hardy campers. There we go. Now, I would describe this little camping enclave as very civilised. We went through quite a few tents of slightly scarier people. <laughs> there was there was some kind of more beery lads that looked frightening to me. But these are the alpha campers. These, <laughs> these are apparently the best-looking, cleverest, but yet most laid-back campers in the whole site. There's some fellows uh, who look as if they're from the 60s. There was, <laughs> even, some, uh, there was some, even some gentle lovemaking There's going some loving. As we arrived. We've, st- we've interrupted it now. <laughs> well, nothing heavy, just, uh, just free love kind some of thing. Some petting. They were just warming up when we interrupted. But we thought we'd come and, and investigate the tent scenario. Rather than going through all your names again, we'll just take that as red. I hope you don't mind. But we're going to inspect Henry's tent. There's a guitar here, it's a bright red guitar, and scrawled in pen are the words, this machine is alive. And the, uh, the guitar's called Lil, Lil Red, but it, it's a kind of devil may care atmosphere here. They're letting the ground come through, and the clothes are on the grass, so there's going to be condensation on those clothes in the morning. That's You're going to be happy with that? Yeah, well, yeah, we don't care, really. They, they don't care. So why did you even bring the ground sheet if you don't care? <laughs> it came with the tent when I bought it. It's just, that's how it is. And listen, I don't want to freak you out, but there's, there's someone's written something on your tent. Can, oh, you, yeah. can you tell us what that says? That's V Festival last year. V- okay, so that's like a kind of a, so kind of a, kind of a war wound. Exactly. Yeah. These, these guys are like GIs, Festival GIs. Why don't you go inside? Is he allowed to go? Is yeah, Adam allowed to go actually well, I've got inside the shoes, tent? Though. I should take well, my just shoes go, off. Just kneel with your knees just inside the All entrance right. there. I see some pills here in a blister <laughs> pack. <laughs> and uh, what kind of pills have you got here? About antihistamines. Antihistamines. Oh. Have you got allergies? I've got very bad hay fever, yeah. Oh, got some maracas? So are you guys, what kind of songs are you singing? When you uh, Do you write your own songs or are you playing covers? Well, these, guys, these guys are in a band here. We're just starting a band, so. me and myself and Niall over there. Um, we might be called Atmosphere and the Dot Dot Dots, but we're not sure yet. Atmosphere and the Dot Dot Dots? Mm. I like it. Are, are you in a position Play to give us, us any... Play first single. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is called Bananas. Yes. It's about bananas. It is. Skibbity bubbity diggity dubbity skibbity bubbity diggity dump bananas. Mummy's in the kitchen oh. when your daddy's not around. Sister's in the garden oh. and your brother's out of town. She eats bananas. She loves bananas. Na na na. That was bananas. That was by bananas. Atmosphere and the dot dot dot. Atmosphere and the dot dot dots. Thank you so much. That was a chap called Jimi Hendrix. He was on the waffles and smoothie stage last night in the corner of the festival. Was, was he recorded there? I think it's called He uh, Joe. He was all right. I mean, everyone was sort of saying, "Oh, you got to see this guy. He's brills." Hmm. He you were play. underwhelmed. I was underwhelmed. I've yeah. seen it all before. You know, I can play. I can do that. I can yeah. play guitar upside yeah. down if I yeah. want, if I really yeah. want. Who can't? Who can't? And he didn't enunciate didn't particularly. He? It's lazy. Not really. And he was wearing one of those Libertines coats. What do you mean? One of those like Same as the, retro uh, 60s yes. coats? Yes. Yeah, so seen predictable. It. Seen, seen it. Seen it. Done it. Not another 60s revival. Boring. Listen, uh, we're coming to you live from Glastonbury. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. One of the biggest challenges of coming to the Glastonbury Festival, uh, aside from surviving the festival itself, is the journey. Oh, yes. It's getting down here. Like, one year you and I drove, didn't we, Adam? Yeah. Back in the days when we were doing telly coverage for what BBC Choice, were we, we thinking? drove down. How long did we sit in a jam for? Uh, seven hours. Seven hours. It was infuriating. It was. Nothing worse than being stuck in a jam, as Especially... Michael Douglas can attest. Exactly. You know, in this big metal box, sitting in the middle of God knows where, Lord knows where. I ran unable out Unable to move. music to play. I had my mini-disc player, and, uh, you know, I thought I'd done pretty well stocking up for the music. 
I was down to the really rotten stuff by and the they, end of that. They yeah. might have improved it over the years, but the roads around Glastonbury become notoriously congested leading up to the festival. Various local villages have to be sort of uh, circled off by security men and stuff. It's a big hoo-ha. It's an absolute diamond It's one of the largest of all the hoo-hahs. Yeah. So this year we decided to come by train. Mm. And we got our agents to pressure the BBC into uh, sending us down in, in minor style, right? A cheap weekend first-class upgrade. Yeah. Because the carriages were very full. So I was sitting in first-class and some other people had had the same idea. They bought the cheap first-class upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and there are a couple of lads sitting opposite me. I say lads, they were in their mid-30s, mid to late 30s. Mm -hmm. Obviously childhood friends. They sat down and they'd obviously sort of got off a week's work early and they were going to relive their youth by going down to Glastow together like they did maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. They went to the buffet as soon as it opened. How many tins of beer do you think they got each? Each. Uh, well, if it was me, I'd go for a couple. Eight. Eight. Eight, eight each. each. <laughs> Two hour journey, eight <laughs> each. What's the maths on that? That's unbelievable. What, What's that, them? one every 15 minutes? That's extraordinary. That was extraordinary. They started off uh, with quite intelligent conversation, but then, and they were sitting right near me. I was trying to read my paper, but I couldn't help but listen to every single word they were saying. Yeah. Uh, they started to have a burping competition. Did they? Yeah. And then that, the burping competition, it devolved into a farting competition. In executive class, this, this is. This was in premier class. <laughs> they started blowing off really loud, classic raspberry farts. What the hell? And I thought, this can't go on. So I, uh, I broke the fourth wall again. No. <laughs> <laughs> like I did at the King Creosote gig. Oh, you intervened. And I turned to them and said, how old did you say you are? <laughs> 37 that was with a smile it was a, joy. It was a right. nice light-hearted thing to say it and was. they looked at me and laughed but they were mortified nice and Cornish light managed to do his mortifying act were again. you shaking while you said it no no I was <laughs> I was I'm used to this kind of thing I'm a professional <laughs> um you know professional party pooper yeah and then we had a little <laughs> chit chat that was fine but they were obviously so freaked out at being caught at being juvenile yeah they tried to then turn their conversation into something more intellectual I wrote down some of the stuff they said immediately after the farting incident. People you don't ever want to be stuck <laughs> in a confined space with. Me. Number one, Joe Quinch. <laughs> uh, they, there, was a lot, there was some giggling after the farting had been exposed, and they sort of didn't know what to do next. Their style was cramped by me. What a weird. S so they started to talk about films, <laughs> and one of them said, You know what the best film is ever made? Citizen Kane. Do you know why? Two words, Greg Toland. Depth of field, 75% of all communications non-verbal. It's about seeing the ceiling. He started to go super intellectual about right. Citizen Kane to try and convince me, yeah. the cornballs, that they weren't just fartmeisters. They sh and, they, they, and they completely stopped guffing. It wasn't like... The guffing stopped. Of field. But he was really making a conscious effort to try and turn his reputation around. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what their names were. I won't embarrass them. But they were having a good time. And you know what the sweetest thing was? When the train pulled up at Castle Carey and the tannoy announced where we were, they both high-fived each other. Hey. Like a couple of excited 15-year-olds. It was wow. very sweet. And they fell out of the train on their faces and <laughs> fell asleep on the platform. As far as I know, they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to tell anyone else in the festival off today? Uh, I'm going to tell a lot of people off in the festival. We yeah. should, after the show's finished, we should go out there and, and uh, record you just telling some people off. They were farting. Like, would you have just tolerated the farting? It was stinky as well. <laughs> oh. You can't do stinky guffs in first class, can no, you? No, I admire your uh, interventionary skills. That's very impressive. Yeah. How old did you say you were? But I don't don't paint me as some kind of like headmaster type character. No, why would it I? Was, it was <laughs> it was jovial. <laughs> it was friendly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're good pals. That's cool. Good. Yeah. Um, and uh, they uh, they polished off all their tinnies by the time they all got the tinnies had gone. That Listen, let's have some more live music. Is this from yesterday as well? This is Block Party, uh, who are on the other stage. This is a track called Prayer. It was Block Party sounding big and impressive there, playing Prayer on the other stage here at Glastonbury last night. We're joined in our tiny, tiny studio by Murray Lachlan Young. He's the poet in residence yeah. for Six Music at Glastonbury. I'm going to try and train one of the webcams on Murray while you do a quick chat so people at home who are watching the live streams can see his face. Yesterday, Murray was sporting a pair of very impressive waders, thigh-high waders, <laughs> battered with mud. Today it's a totally different sort of thing. He looks as if he's just come from a desert island. He's got a, a straw hat on. He's wearing sandals even. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I, can, I can definitely say that it is now a flip-flop viable site. Are you comfortable that it's going to remain such? I'm pretty confident that it's going to be that way now, oh, yeah. Oh, good, I'm And glad. the mud has just moved from that sort of uh, 
consistency where you get great clods of it attached to your boots and it's gone through that sort of slightly bouncy crust yes and it's just heading into the sort of um summer tarmac right 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 it's not it's at a nice stage actually. yeah yeah because if it gets any warmer and hotter then you get the dust the dust and then they they have to have the lorries coming along sprinkling all the paths yeah yeah, that's yeah, right yeah. uh so what kind of a poem have you got for us today do you want to just read it or will you talk about it th thematically beforehand well, maybe if I just read it, and okay. then if you guys... Well, we'll I, maybe I, I'll give you a little bit of something beforehand, but it's, it's called To a Scrumpy Victim. Oh, yes. Yeah, and well. you see them, they start to increase in number, especially when you get heat, of course, because scrumpy and, and sunshine are, are a classic combination. Well, for, the sunshine makes the apples ferment further. It's, yes, yes. It's in the stomach. It's the Absolutely, deadliest yeah. combination <laughs> known to man. It is, and I was talking to uh, um, Mark Collingwood, who's the stage manager of the Circus and Cabaret, and he reckons it's still... Um, Scrumpy is the biggest destroyer really? of mines in, in Glastonbury over the weekend. <laughs> Since 1970, he reckons. It's never changed. Yeah. Molotov cocktail. Let's hear the poem. Okay, to a, scrumpy, to a Scrumpy victim. There you lie, mouth open wide, deep baked, still cooking in the morning sun, scorched swarthy by Scrumpy God and wild Glastonbury night on which you raged, rattled and extolled, unleashed the beast, half man, half priest, until all things ceased in catatonic crisis, felled by the still fermenting dregs of your magical, malignant ally, drunk, wasted, ruined. No memory at all of when you spied with your greedy eye that gallon jug of roadside rough bought bulk brown plastic barrelette with tenor flush your budget ticket to the court of the scrumpy king and on to the gates of oblivion a trip on which you cut your sway though blunted blood-filled random blade past fluffy cyberpunk and folky beard to flight through cafe glade mosh pit did you trip gulp howl but never sip and now there you lie o oh, shipwrecked masthead splintered hulk and gently fry thrown high on glastonbury's mud-baked shore that was wonderful, Murray. Thank that you very amazing. much. That was amazing. I've you. got to get me some scrumpy. When did you compose that? Well, I'd started it yesterday and uh, finished it this morning. Wow, that was fantastic. And perfectly captures the scene of devastation that you're confronted with when you arrive on the site. <laughs> mm. we're, we're not sleeping on the site. You're camping, right? I'm camping. I had a, I had a classic uh, Glastonbury uh, scrumpy victim uh, experience this morning when I was just nipping down for my morning shower um, yeah. after my physical jerks and um, I saw this, this person in, uh, in a tutu um, with that classic sort of deep-baked look clucking like a little chicken and just jump hopping along going, yep. Yep. And I thought she's having a laugh. She's joking. This, you know, somebody's watching her. But no, she actually did genuinely think she was a chicken. Blimey! And she's wow. she's still got a couple of days to go. <laughs> That's Absolutely. a good time. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So she's got to keep it slow and steady from now yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> she's probably having the best time of anybody here. <laughs> That's likely. when you know you're really having a party. When you think you're a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you have a nice time at Glastonbury? It was wicked. <laughs> I was so ill in the head that I started clucking like a chicken on the Saturday morning. Later on, Murray, you were saying that maybe you're going to go for a sauna up in the healing fields. Yeah, I, I just got um, pretty fried by the, uh, the amount of writing that I was doing yesterday, and I got out and I thought, right, and I went to see Neil Young, because we're right next to the pyramid stage, yeah. and I, I walked back and I thought, right, I'm going to go out now, and um, I just was so tired, and I felt like such a loser s creeping back to my tent. Yeah. I thought, well, tonight if I go for a sauna get naked with the, uh, with the dreadlock massive and, uh, and get really hot and then cover myself in freezing cold water, perhaps that might just get me into the night. That'll sort you mm. out. Wow. Well, good luck with that. Um, that's uh, <laughs> I think I something it, yeah. I might not be joining you for. I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Murray. Okay, guys. And we'll see you, uh, Thank you. probably later on tonight for our uh, sunset show, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if not, then certainly tomorrow. But have a good day for the rest of the day. We're going to play some music right now. And this is... Oh, we got now? Abba. Abba. Oh, yeah, this is a free play. Where do you stand on Abba, Murray? Um, well, I, just, I think... You got You got to love them, really. Yeah. Are you how a can, fan how can of you the um, Are you a fan you of the movie Mamma Mia? <laughs> um, I haven't seen it. I'm what? afraid because I have sons. Ah. Um, I think most people take their daughters to see Mamma Mia, don't they? Yeah. I don't know. My dad's obsessed with it. Is he now? <laughs> he is. Yeah. He absolutely loves it. He loves it. Well, this is a track I'm going to play for my mum. She likes this show and she likes this song. I think my mum is... and your dad should get together. They really should. Yeah. They could sing this to each other. This is SOS. 
That was the virgins, ladies and gentlemen. That's what virgins sound like. They sounded a little bit like super furry animals, though, didn't they? This is Adam and Joe here at uh, Glastonbury, 2009. Very nice to have you along. Yeah, now don't forget, listeners, that the BBC has gone interactiveness crazy in an attempt to keep young and hip. They've embraced almost every single technological platform that's out there. You can see all the webcams at bbc.co.uk slash Glastonbury. There's Twitter actions on a Twitter feed. Uh, I think there's going to be some audio boo button or whatever that is. No, what am I saying? Some audio boo action. They've and there's going to be red button uh, coverage as well. They've also employed uh, some people, some psychics, and a couple of precogs, mm -hmm. like in the film Minority yep. Report. Uh, they are experiencing some of tonight's action for you later on. Yep. And they're reporting, they're saying it's really good. Jarvis Cocker apparently is amazing. Mm. The BBC are going to try and relaunch Dialer Disc as well, the Dialer Disc service. Uh, they've also got um, Telex machines yes. here as well, if you've still got a Telex at yep. home. And long wave Morse code signals. Bringing you updates on Lily, the colour of Lily Allen's knickers. Also, if you receive carrier pigeon mail, uh, you just need to open the hatch <coughs> of your carrier pigeon bo box, and the address for the hatch is carrier pigeon hatch. <coughs> what? Why do you? Why do you? Do you address a carrier pigeon? What do you mean? That's the thing. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? I don't know. Well, no, uh, I'm like, just... I'm imagining the BBC, like, letting loose a whole bunch of carrier pigeons. That's the, no, the main hub. And they've the all got information pigeons. about the festival. Exactly. In little, you know, metal tubes and screwed you... around their necks. Exactly. Or no, strapped around their ankles. Uh -huh. That's where you put information on a pigeon around the ankle. Awesome. And then they're winging their way to various ta uh, license payers' households. Yeah. One for each license payer. Yeah, well, I mean, it's modern. It's modern it is carrier modern. pigeons, though, right. right? It's not all just, like, messages tied to their ankles. They've got chips in their beaks. Do they? So what happens is the pigeon arrives. Yeah. You see it's from the main uh, pigeon hub. Yeah. You shove the uh, pigeon's beak into the side of your computer. Yes, a U.S. beak. Into the, exactly. Yes. Into the U.S. beak slot. And then it'll download the information from the pigeon's really? beak. Really? Then you pull it out, you lob it in the air, and off it goes back to Glastonbury. Yeah. That's and how it works. And you know the colour of Lily Allen's Nick Knocks. Nick Knocks. It's all paid for by the taxpayer, because it's what they want. It's a good use of money. It's a very good it's use exactly of money. exactly what the public want. All right, we're going to play some music by The Horrors now. This was recorded yesterday here at Glastonbury. And after that, I think we're going to be speaking to a family that's been enjoying the festival, and we'll find out how they've been getting on. After this, The Horrors from the park stage yesterday. That's the horrors with Do You Remember, live from Glastonbury. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, your number one station for Glastonbury coverage. Adam, can you say that in, like, a, a deep, smooth voiceover man voice? BBC Six Music, your number one station for live Glastonbury coverage. Mmm, smooth coverage. Ooh, suntan lotion. Smooth, sunny suntan lotion coverage. Ooh... I, Thanks. That kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks mm, a lot. Peeling skin. Stop it. Stop now. Now, listen, I said that we were just about to talk to our Glastonbury family, a real family that's enjoying the festival who we're going to chat with shortly, but not right now because we've been joined by Lucy O'Duherty. That's how you pronounce it. O'Duherty. O'Duherty. Lucy O'Duherty. Uh, she is our music news correspondent here at the festival. How are you doing, Lucy? I'm fine, thank you very much. And you have just witnessed the most extraordinary thing. It's the, the strength of street knowledge. What? That's an NWA joke. Oh. Get with it. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone out there going, oh, obviously it's an NWA joke. Uh, you've witnessed the beginning of the music uh, on the Pyramid stage. I have, Day indeed. two, yes. and who was playing? It was Vivi Brown who opened up. She played yesterday already, but this is her big main stage thing, and she was so excited. It was really cute to see. Yeah. She's like this fizzly little bottle of rock and roll energy, and she was just looked gleeful and had drums and was banging them around with big pointy shoulder pads and a massive quiff. So she looked amazing, and she charmed everybody. I don't think anyone's going to leave that field today and not be a Vivi Brown fan. How was the crowd, though, and what kind of size of crowd did they get at that hour of the day? Well, I was there for the opening yesterday when it was Bjorn again, and that had the biggest crowd. It was like a headliner crowd with everybody doing an ABBA sing-along, yeah. which you can appreciate, I'm sure. Not the gestures, but sure. the thought. Um, and, um, yeah, Vivi Brown had a bit of a tiny crowd in comparison to that, I have to say. But there were people who were there were really dancing and getting in their rock and roll vibe, so... Is she, is she one of the singers with insane hair? Yeah. Massive, yes. massive quiff. 
She's endangering the planet with the amount of hairspray she uses on there. You've got to have a big quiff to get ahead in music, wouldn't you say, Lucy, these days? I would say that. One of our music news reporters, Rodrigo, has a prize-winning quiff, so I think he's got there a starry go. future. I mean, I don't want to just bang on about Grimmy all the time, but Grimmy's got a big quiff. Joe's in love with, um, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm in love. I mean, I'm, I'm, like, fascinated by Grimmy. What's his name again? Grimmy. Nick Grimshaw. Nick Grimshaw. Oh, oh, yeah. He's got a big quiff and he's getting ahead. Joe exactly. absolutely adores I've Nick I've got to Grimshaw. get myself a quiff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now, sure he's here somewhere. You could stalk him a little bit. Oh, 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 I will. What kind of news have you got for us as far as the rest of the day goes, music-based Well, stuff, I thought there was going to be some news from this Vivi Brown gig, actually. Right. She did tell us in an interview yesterday that she was toying with the idea of doing a Michael Jackson cover and doing Rock With You as a bit of a tribute. Oh, yeah. But she didn't, so I think she chickened out of that, which is understandable because the vibe was quite high. You don't want to bring people down first thing in the morning. Yeah. But we can say that we talked to Baba Mal yesterday as well, and he is planning a bit of an MJ tribute he later on. He is planning on. to bring people down. He, he wants to bring everybody <laughs> down flat. That's his, that's his plan on the jazz stage later. Yeah. There's this thing that's billed as... Um, Music for Change, or I actually can't remember what it's called. Changing the World with Music or something is built yeah. on the Jazz World stage. And it's him, and he's got magic numbers, and he's got Gabriella Chilmy, who's that little popet person who was on the stage, main stage oh, yesterday. Yeah. And they're doing, they were planning to do some Bob Marley stuff and just music that's changed the world. So I think they're going to incorporate a bit of Michael Jackson into that yeah. and have a bit of a, like, like uh, Mike Skinner in the streets did yesterday, do a bit of a medley. Oh, did they do uh, a medley, Mike Skinner? Right. I've heard the rumour, that's the glass and rumour. Well, it did definitely happen, actually, but I wasn't there, unfortunately, yeah. which I'm sad about. And how about Lady Lady Gaga there, Lucy? You were describing her earlier as the queen of synthetic electro-fused robopop. That's my mad that's journalism good, skills. That's good, that's good, because Michael Jackson Doesn't was me. the king of pop. It's a big pop family, isn't it? A, a big pop royal family. Mm. I mean, to be the queen of synthetic electro-fused robopop, how far away in line from the throne are you? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like being well, the Lady the Jane Grey, right, isn't it? R yes, yes. She's yes. something along that power. She's the queen, but it's just a very tiny... Um, <laughs> kingdom. Kingdom, yeah. <laughs> a niche kingdom. <laughs> she has good quiffage, doesn't she? She's got an amazing quiff. I promise you, my quiff theory, that's where it's at. I'm going to get a quiff and I'm going to leave you guys behind in the dust. Those quiffs are deadly, though. If you bumped into one, can you imagine? You'd, they'd take your eye out. It'd be awful. Uh, and what's the big highlight for you personally as a music fan this weekend? This weekend, well, I saw Animal Collective last night, which was Yeah, stormy. was that good? It was brilliant. To be honest, I was so tired, I was virtually lying on the floor, and they kind of lulled me into this kind of zoned-out space, which was very nice. But yeah. they were amazing. I, I'd heard rumours that they were a little bit hit and miss live, so they stormed All in. All the Fleet Foxes were off watching them as well, weren't they, I Oh, think, were they? That's good. And Dead Weather yesterday, I saw Jack White come on and do yes. his Dead Weather thing. How was that? That was amazing. It was weird because they were billed as a special guest and I was voxing some of the crowd beforehand saying, so who do you think the special guest is going to be? And they were like, it's Muse, it's Muse, it's definitely Muse. Mm. And I was feeling a bit bad for Jack White because although he's amazing, if people are expecting Muse and they get someone, a new mm. band of music they've mm. never heard before, it could be a bit of a downer. But he came on and to begin with, people's faces looked like, who on earth is this? We don't recognise them because he was the drummer, so who's at the back? So he obviously wasn't at the front of the right. stage. But by the end, he'd won everybody over. I'm sure. Yeah, and Guy Garvey was in the crowd cheering along and Emily Evis was there as well. So wow. quite a few stars turned out for that one. I wonder if he's going to stick around. Do you think someone like him would stick around or just split immediately? I want to see him stalking around like a big, weird, white skeleton man. They were amazing yesterday. The whole band had matching wellies with orange rims. Oh. All in black, black leather jackets, black skinny jeans, black wellies, orange rims. Stylish. Yeah. Cool. Lucy, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, thanks, Lucy. We're going to go to some more live music. This is from yesterday. This is NERD with Maybe. That's N.E.R.D. recorded yesterday on one of them stages here at Glastonbury. Were they on the Pyramid stage? They were, of course they were. Course They're they one were. of the biggest bands in the Omniverse. That's right. Uh, we've been joined in our tiny studio now. It's very full in here by a couple of families or representatives from a couple of families at least. We've got Jane. Jane is mum and uh, Jane's daughter is called Hallie. Hi, Hallie. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to have you here. And there's Karen over there. And Karen is Oscar's mum. Hi, Oscar. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Now, Oscar, how old are you? Ten. And how old are you, Hallie? Eight. And is this your Don't first ask time? Don't mums how old they are. I thought you were going to ask the mum. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not. I would never do that to awful. a woman. Um, is this your first time at Glastonbury? Yeah. yeah. First time at any festival, or have you been to other festivals before? Been to others. I've been to other ones. Which one have you been to before, Oscar? I've been to the Evolution Festival. No. Evolution. Were you Were you on your own with some mates? Did you drive down in a VW? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> and how about you, Hallie? Which one have you been to? I can't quite remember. I can't remember. They all blur. They were so. Yeah. Been to one in. When when you drink that much beer at such a young age, things do tend to blur. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and, and how about you, um, Jane and Karen? Is this your? This is not your first Glastonbury, is it? No, no. In you fact, how many times have you been here? 
well, I came about 18 years ago with my husband before we had kids, and then um, we thought it might be quite nice to bring them when we came back. But I think you came last year, didn't yeah, you? No, yeah, before last we were here when it was really, really muddy. And you brought the children then? No, no, this no, is the first time. No, of course, this is the first time. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because, I mean, I've got children myself, but the oldest is seven, and the young, uh, then there's a five-year-old, and the youngest is only a few months. Yeah, well, we've got, that's exactly the same setup as we've got, right. so everyone did say that we're a bit mad. There was only one woman who said, oh, I'd love to do that, and that was our next-door neighbour. But we've got an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a six-month-old, and I uh, booked the tickets when I was pregnant, and then after I booked them, I did think, oh, maybe that was a bit hormonal. But, um, <laughs> and I started panicking a little bit, Bit about coming when she got to about two months old and I wasn't sure how I was going to cope then but actually it's been easy because with her not walking I think if she was another year yeah. and you were chasing around and it was muddy and that kind of thing but they kind of drop off to sleep a lot when they're six months so it's not so bad so they're all on site right now mm -hmm. yeah and the youngest is being looked after by dad with this hangover <laughs> well no it's it's um karen's husband paul who's got the hangover oh, okay. mine's um left in the kids field with the baby and the five-year-olds just the kids feels unbelievable for sitting there and just relaxing while the kids go off and do it's stuff. It's good, so. isn't it? I was checking that out yesterday. I walked past it and they've got a sort of climbing mountain. That's brilliant. And, like, it's special amazing. special facilities and everything. Well, you think you can just sit. We've just sat at the top next to the Helter Skelter and the kids just go off and do stuff. She's done face painting, puppet yes. making, made some fairy wings, been on the castle, a few rounds of the Helter Skelter. There's just tons of stuff that can go off and you can't see them for an hour was that, or so. Was that enjoyable, Hallie? Yeah. In the kids' area. And what about music-wise? Are there any bands here that excite you? Have you got albums by anybody here, or are you just kind of um, trying to blank the music? I don't have any people that I'm... Who do you like to listen to when you're at home? Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, Abba, yeah. Well, Bjorn again were here. Did you not go and t listen to them? I did, but I only got the end bit, though. Was it any good? Was it, was it good? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, there you they're, go. They're the absolute kings of the tribute band scene. They really are. What about Lily Allen? She was playing yesterday. Were you interested in her at all? Yeah. Did you see her dress? It was unbelievable. You did it was the purple one. The how? purple one, and it was. It looked as if it was in two sections. It looked as if someone had cut it right the way down the middle. And it had just come apart, and it was being held together by tiny bits of sticky tape. I you paid a lot of be... attention to that. Well, I was absolutely <laughs> mesmerised. <laughs> she looked like the girl in Lazy Town. Do you ever watch Lazy Town? No. No. You're Don't missing watch out. Lazy Town. Oh well, I'll, I'll kill that dead. Lazy Town. How, how about you, Oscar? What 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 have you been checking out, bandwise? Anything? Um, I feel like I'm on the kids' field. Right, but no bands, no no acts, no um, uh, musicians. You're excited about seeing. I went, to, I went to see the Papini sisters. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. they're yeah. good. And they do, they're sort of close harmony 40s type stuff, aren't they? Yeah. Was that because you like that. yourself wanted to see them, or did one of the parents take you there? <laughs> My mum wanted to see them. Your mum, and what, what did you think of them? You can be honest, don't stand on ceremony for your mum. They Tell were, us the truth. They were quite good. They were quite good, but could do a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we they should get brilliant. that message through to them. <laughs> and what, how does it work with all the walking from place to place? Because I imagine that would be really tough with children, because I know mine certainly don't like to walk more than about 200 yards before they start wailing and crying and demanding. The walking's to not too bad, although the pushchair got a little bit clogged up yesterday. Yeah. But well, they've been all right, actually. But the thing is, if you go everywhere we've gone, we've kind of gone and then sat for a while and then moved on somewhere else. I mean, yesterday yesterday was a bit of a slog just because of the mud. Yeah. But um, you can just, every every field you can go you go in, you can sit down for a bit. And as long as you do that, you're all right. We've just not been really, you know, vigilant about, oh, let's get here by a certain time. And I think yeah. if you just <laughs> go with the flow instead of trying to be somewhere at a particular point then you're all right really and let me just quickly ask hallie and oscar what, what do you think of the behavior of the adults here you've been looking at you've been probably checking out some people who are say maybe maybe five years older than you six or seven years older than you can you see yourselves behaving in this way when you're independent you know when you get to 16 are you going to come down here and act like a loony what do you think yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> yes Not says oscar are you looking are you counting the days till you can come down here and act like a loony yeah, no way. yeah. <laughs> well what about you Hallie? 
Yeah. Yes, <laughs> look at that. So Glastonbury's future is secure. And do you worry as parents that, uh, like, as a, as a prissy parent... You are I, a prissy I, parent. I'm a very prissy look parent. Look at you, your prissy little tutu. I'm even standing prissily. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe went to see some comedy in the uh, cabaret tent yesterday in the middle of the afternoon, and there's quite a lot of effing and blinding going on. There was some swearing. They didn't seem to be, you we know, did see cleaning Lily, up for the kids. <laughs> there has been a whole new world of language opened up to mm. us. Um, like, Lily Allen, we were quite enjoying Lily Allen, but then there was that song about the BNP, and uh, yes. <laughs> that that was good. Have, have you kids? Have you, now, in, in no way say, don't say anything bad. But have you been shocked by anything you've seen? Uh, you can just give me a yes or no answer. Or have you taken it all in your stride? Is it just another day on on, on the block? Just. It's just another day. <laughs> it's all it's fine. fine. There yeah. was no moments when you looked at your parents and said, "Mummy, I thought you weren't supposed to say things like that." <laughs> Hallie? The no. ting tings last yeah. night were a little no. bit. Her language was a little bit fruity, wasn't it? When right. We got there. Yeah. Well, you guys look pretty sensible, You're and sensible. I must say, I'm very impressed by how clean you are as well. Like, I thought you would have been a bit more covered in mud and stuff, but no, you look as if you're freshly <laughs> scrubbed and showered. Can I just say Oscar's probably upset because he did ask me yesterday. He says, "Can I put some dirty clothes on on Sunday and go face first, belly first down the hill in the mud?" Yes. Oh, yeah, go for it, but it's time to dry up. Well, so. listen, chaps, thank you so much for talking to us. I really hope you enjoy the rest of your festival. Yeah, thanks for coming in. No problem. And maybe see you again. We've got some music right now. This is Jack Pignate, and it's called Be The One. That was Jack Pignate with Be The One. This is Adam and Joe here at Glastonbury 2009. Later on this afternoon, we are going to be going to the um, tent. One the of the tents. tents. The oh, big tent. The, the cabaret tent, tent is right. what it is. And we're going to be telling some of our made-up jokes. Or what I say are. Some of the jokes that have been sent in to us by you listeners over the months. And it's going to be like classic made-up jokes, basically. Yeah. And, and we are going to credit all the authors of the jokes that we use. So, Absolutely. in a way, your, your material is being performed at Glastonbury. But you know, the one person whose name I couldn't find was the... Uh, which joke? It was my dog... Ate a shuttlecock. Bad Minton. Yeah, my dog Minton ate a shuttlecock. If Bad you sent Minton. us that joke, text us 64046 or email whatever. What's the email address, Adam? It's adamandjoe.6music at bbc dot co dot uk yeah if you're the author of that bad minton joke then send your name in how are we going to distinguish authentic authors from fake ones we'll figure it out during the news and yeah here you, is... you wouldn't lie about a joke no. i mean that's bad that's as low as uh, as low as it gets it's twelve thirty. yes as joe said time for the news that's the yeah yeah yes with heads will roll this is adam and joe here at glastonbury 2009 do you enjoy that track joe i did enjoy it it sounds very like a prodigy song to me and it just came to me that the bass line is a bit like the bass line from This Is Not A Love Song. Right, some of the tinkly bits sound like outer space, don't they? Yeah, it's just an assemblage of nicked bits. That's what m modern music's like. It's true, isn't it? I shouldn't worry about it. Hey man, have you been following the tennis at all? Uh, you know what? No. Are you not a big tennis fan? I don't mind tennis, but I've been ignoring it. You hate tennis? I hate tennis. You loathe tennis and all the people involved with it? No. No. I, you know, I'm not fussed by tennis at all. The most exciting thing about tennis for me is the robot roof they've got o over the Wimbledon Robo roof Stadium. That looks nice because it's all temperature controlled. When the roof goes on, everything cools you down. Love a, there. You love Adam Buxton. You love a hermetically sealed, temperature controlled. I love, co I love uh, air container. You know, I know it's not you good do. for the planet, but I do love air. If you're driving along on a hot day, you don't like the windows wound down, do you? You like them closed and the aircon on. I, I like a bit of air. Yeah, you see, I'm the other way around. Really? I like an open window. Would you rather um, burn to death or freeze to death? That's a good question. Can I do both? Mm, what? Like almost get completely burned and then suddenly at the last minute you're totally frozen? Well, the, the answer to that is usually like uh, freezing to death would be better because you can put more layers on. Whereas if you're burning to death, you know, you can't take the skin off. No, can that's you? true, isn't it? So I'd go for cold, but then I don't like the look of either, to be honest. How about drowning? Would you go for any drowning? <laughs> Are these threats? No, I'm just curious. Uh, no, I, I don't think there are many upsides to drowning. Buried alive? Buried alive. Uh, yeah. No, no. No, no. What are you talking about? I don't know. I just went off on a tangent. This all started with tennis, and specifically the fact that a lot of people have been discussing the vocal grunting styles of one of the players. I don't know if she's done very well in the tournament or not, or if she's been knocked out or what. Her name is Michelle Larcher de Brito. I think she's from Brazil. And she's young, you know, she's barely in her 20s, if that. 
but she has got an extraordinarily ludicrous grunting style. And you know the kind of thing I mean, right? Previous famous grunters have included Monica Sellers and uh, Jimmy Connors, wasn't he a big grunter? Anyway, this is Larcher de Brito in action. I mean, that's not even a grunt so much as just a, a shout, Woo! a yell. She's having fun. It's an animalistic yell. She just loves it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's a good attitude. I mean, you could distract your opponent with that kind of this thing, This is though. the thing. I mean, there must be some rules. There, this is a thing that everyone's discussing. Is it on? The other thing that makes it problematic is that she doesn't do it in practice. Do you know what I'd do? What? I'd, uh, I'd go, uh, and serve, so then I'd shout, phone call from your mum! Yeah. Fo your dad's over there! Exactly. What, shoelace! Your flies are done! That I've, kind of thing. I've been trying to come up I'd with win a few using those techniques. alternatives myself. It is a fun thing to do. If I it's was fun. a big tennis player, mm. these are some of the grunts that I would come up with. Do you want to hear a couple? Yes. No, I don't. What would, what would you do if I said, no, I don't? Um, I'd come over to where you're sitting in the corner <laughs> of the cubicle. I'd smack your head against the window a few times. Oh, yes, times. I do. I do. I do. Wait till you pass that and then I'd play them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you like that one? <laughs> that's just like a that's like monkey tennis. <laughs> just sounds like an ape playing tennis. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Do you think that would put sounds people on? I mean, that's celebratory, though, isn't it? Yeah, celebratory of what? What Brazilian. are you celebrating? Why does that sound Brazilian? That's where monkeys live. <laughs> in the jungles in Brazil. <laughs> They've got monkeys in other places. Not really. Really? Yeah. The best monkeys come yeah, from Brazil. Yeah, the top monkeys. Do you want another tennis grunt? No. Come yes, on. Yes, I do. Here's another one, because I've got about 15. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's kind of taken you long. <laughs> You're really pleased with this. It's, it is good, though. You're missing, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At the end of each grunt, he's doing a little chuff. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't hear that, did I? <laughs> Well, that's just pollutive, isn't it? Yeah, but do you think that would be on? Because surely, cause sometimes the chuff comes with a, with an extreme vocal exhortation. That's true, isn't it? When you lose control of yeah. your bodily functions and one, well, one of them escapes. And, and do you think anyone Does that would ever happen it? to you in company? You're watching a film of or something, course. you get overly relaxed, or you laugh at something on the telly, and sure. suddenly a, a big, loud yeah. raspberry comes out. <laughs> <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> no, but that's a good idea. I certainly think a tennis player could g gain capital from some chuffing. How about this one from... I, I was imagining this one from, like, an American player. Uh, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Just threats. Uh, I gotta kill you. <laughs> right, so is it aggressive? I gotta kill you. American. Yeah. No, but that wouldn't be allowed. Uh, I'll kill you. Uh, I'm gonna kill you. You can't threaten <laughs> your opponent with death. No, but if it's not, like, he could just say, it sounds like I'm gonna kill you. Right. But that's just the way the breath comes out. Right. That's how right. I train. Right. You know, I train hard, I train to the max, I push my body to the right. limit. And if it sounds like I'm saying, I'm gonna kill you, then that's, yeah. that's your problem. I'd imagine that's par for the course. You know, I'd be more frightened by the chuffing. Par for the course is a golf thing, man. Oh, you're right, I'm mixing my metaphors. But you know, all tennis players want to kill each other through the medium of sport, That's right? True, they want to kill it? each other's careers. Yeah. So I think you need to be more threatening. More? Yeah, stab. What kind of thing would well, you do? Well, just go be for? more specific about the method of death. Yeah. So it's really threatening. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm going to stab you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm going to come stab you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would be illegal. That'd be stepping over, crossing a line, but, uh... That'd be awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. In fact, maybe the linesman could, you know, call whether that was over the line. <laughs> <laughs> How close to the line that felt. <laughs> That's Tennis News here at Glastonbury 2009. Time for some more music now. This is Jamie T, recorded on the Peel stage last night, playing Salvador. What? I couldn't absolute understand a word he was saying. Loop racket. Disgraceful. Who on earth was that man? I don't know. I didn't know. It was really incomprehensible. Shouting, screaming. I didn't understand Dropping a his word tea. he was saying. Terribly bad influence. He can't pronounce his T's, even though he's called Jamie T. Repetitive derivative. I mean, it sounds like an angry, um, person who's got into a scrap over a parking space. Mm. And, 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 and done a song all and, over it. And... And, and, 
And, and that was Jamie T. It was recorded uh, last night here at Glastonbury. And this is Adam and Joe, of course, if you didn't realise. Mm. It's a special Glastonbury show, so many of our usual features, if you're a regular listener to our programme on a Saturday morning, are not present and correct. Sorry about that if you're missing them. But we've got a couple of made-up jokes, actually. Do we? Um, yeah, well, I, I was going to tell you these jokes by way of giving ourselves another plug for our stint at the cabaret stage later on, do which you think you will anybody, be able to hear tomorrow. Do you think anybody here at the festival has a portable DAB? Do you think anyone's listening? Possibly. Do portable DABs exist? There might be one or two listeners. Well, if you are listening, don't forget to get down to the cabaret tent at four this afternoon, because Adam and I are going to be doing five minutes of, uh, when we say doing, I mean reading, five minutes of made-up jokes sent in by listeners, and we're going to see what the audience response is like. Yeah, it could go either way. Either it could be a nice... We're hoping that members of Black Squadron will be there to support us. Yeah. But it could be that most people don't know who the hell we are and will be angry about the fact that we're on stage interrupting the flow of the comedy and even more angry about the fact that we're just reading them off a sheet of paper. Mm. But uh, my plan was to tell the audience, such as it was, not to respond in any way because right. we've only got five minutes, a tight five, right? So I say to the audience, you're not allowed to laugh at any of these jokes. You're not allowed to respond in any way. If you think they're rubbish, you, you can't boo, you can't laugh, you can't do anything until the whole lot's finished, right? And mm. then we just rattle through them alternately, you and I. Yep, yep, yep. And um, do it like that. That's going to be a, a rip-roaring success. Don't forget you can see all this action at Glastonbury via the webcams at bbc.co.uk slash Glastonbury. There's webcams in this studio. Someone appears to be, like, vision mixing between the two of us. Ah. Yeah, cutting to a shot of me and my weird festival beard. You look as if you're in the velvet underground there. Thanks, man. That's flattering. <laughs> Teeth look quite white. <laughs> and then they're cutting back to you in a kind of as if we're on TV. Oh, look, look there that. I am. I don't like that shot. That's not a flattering shot. I don't shot. like it. Uh, and <clears throat> Lauren Laverne is going to be coming to join us for our last hour in approximately nine minutes. So there's loads to look forward to. And don't forget, we're back. Uh, on air tomorrow between 11 and 2. The and same tonight. segment. And tonight. Sunset show, 9 till 10. Can't escape our idiocy. Here's a couple of made-up jokes before we play some Neil Young from last night's gig. Uh, here's one from Catriona in Edinburgh. Yes. She says, while shopping in Asda recently, my boyfriend made up a joke while in the fruit and vegetable section. That's often the place where you make up jokes. Funny place. In the supermarket. He seemed quite proud of it. So I thought I'd send it in. What's Paul McCartney's favourite type of lettuce? Lettuce B. <sighs> Get it? And afterwards she explains, that's a joke on, that's a play on the word, on the song title, Let It Be. Yes. I suppose it requires that you imagine that the lettuces are lined up in a row, with each one represented by a different letter of the alphabet. Anyway, I thought I'd share it with you. Thanks, Catriona from Edinburgh. Here's another one. You ready? Yeah, kind of. This is from Alistair Baker's friend. <laughs> distancing himself. The yeah. author's already distancing himself. He says, My friend Jim wanted to share this with you. Have you ever been to the underwater, Glastonbury? For all intents and porpoises, it was a bit wet. <laughs> quickly play some music. Quickly. Here's a little uh, jingle to set the scene before we play Neil Young doing a cover of the Beatles' Day in the Life. There is Neil Young There is a tree there's a naked man doing a weed. There you go. This is Neil Young uh, from last night here at Glastonbury, apparently uh, ending his cover of Day in the Life with two minutes of pure noise. White noise. Yeah. You see, that spiritualised, for example. Was it Spiritualized or Spacemen 3, who could they do about 17 minutes? They built their careers on white noise. Yeah. No, no, no. Who am I thinking of? My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, There's a lot of that in Spiritualized as well, though. They love of, white noise. Yeah, kind of a wall of sound. Neil Young. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? That was pretty incredible, though, don't you think? I wish I'd been there for that. One man who was there for that. Were you there for that, Matt Everett? I was there for that. It was amazing. Yeah, Matt's joined us in the studio. He's another music news hound here at Six Music, and you're a lucky man. You actually get to see all the acts. We have to go and record packages with loonies in tents and stuff. <laughs> you actually get to see performances. Neil, Neil was fantastic. What you heard there was the start of about 50 minutes of racket. He got his guitar and was just pulling the strings off. No. And then he rested it against an amplifier and hit it with a stand. Oh. Oh, so it just trick. went clong, 
clong. Really? But, in, but in quite of not like I'm going to smash my instrument. More, I'm just yeah. going to kind of gently tease fong, it, fong, flick it fong. like you're flicking someone's bottom in their locker room. <laughs> it was, it <laughs> was a towel. It was very. Mu- it was. It was quite frat boy. Yes, it was yeah. quite like that. It was quite like, that was that was definitely one of the highlights. <laughs> I'm going to tease my guitar <laughs> with a stand. Oh wait, was she a big frat person? <laughs> Put the lotion in a basket. He didn't play Harvest Moon though, did he? He didn't play. Um, What's the song called that we played last night? It is called Harvest Moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was. It was the thing is with Neil Young, you, you don't know. One of the reasons that people love him is the fact that he can be just quite cantankerous and just play album tracks from some of his awful albums as opposed to some great songs from his good albums. But he did like a nice mix. He did Cinnamon Girl. He did Needle and the Damage Done. He did a version of Keep on Rocking in the Free World that did go on for forty-five minutes. Yeah, and he'd stop and there'd be a big noisy bit. And then he'd start again. But that's kind of what you want from Neil. He did, um, he looked like he was enjoying himself. Did he do Hey Hey My Mind? Yeah, he opened with that. That's right. Mm, we so, heard that. So that, that's, that's a kind of, you, you never know whether a band is going to do a headliner like that who's been around for so long is going to kind of commit to the songs that people want you to You would hear. have thought, though, Glastonbury, a crowd like that, you would have thought you would veer towards your classics. You would be, it would be incredibly perverse if you yeah. denied people yeah. the, uh, But that sounded like a good mix. Riches. And Matt, otherwise, you've been sort of snuffling around the corners of the festival, checking out some less famous less bands, famous fans. right? This morning, I went to go and see We Are Band, Ooh. which was, uh, three people wearing <laughs> white lycra, <laughs> very, band. very earnestly pu- pushing laptop buttons, really bad techno. Yeah. Which, that was quite exciting. Right. And they had everyone that was kind of, probably not been to bed, kind of doing that half-hearted half sort of shuffle where you're kind of, you're not quite sure whether they're going to push through the what day. What time was this? That was about half an hour ago. Really? And uh, I saw Baddies as well, which was just good, proper, noisy indie. It's not all trendy rave stuff around here or classic right. legends. You've just got some good, proper, at just boys wearing jeans and shirts buttoned up to the top baddies is a good name as well that is a good name not that we are band isn't of course we how are do you think they spell the their band in, in that name right b-a-double-n-e-d wasn't that the the grain chill band they were called the band yeah <laughs> they were called the band how the was band, that spelled yeah that B-A-double-N-E-D. was b-a-double-n-e-d yeah as in the band robbie robertson Bob Dylan's backing band, the band. Well, a kind of a play on that. But they weren't in great As if they'd been banned, yeah. I, oh, I'm getting oh. confused. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wow, so that's really gone full circle with that name. Who else have you seen, Matt? Uh, this morning, I saw a little bit of uh, Peter, Peter Bjorn and John. Oh, right. And so, obviously, they're enormously famous for their track. The yep. Sainsbury's track, I call it. Yeah. <laughs> the home base track. <laughs> they must be loaded. They must come down in a sort of platinum Winnebago with all their advert money, don't you think? Yeah, new, new material, new record. Not going down as well. Really? Whistling? Did they have the whistling? Um, I kind of watched about 15 minutes of it and everybody around me was kind of shuffling their feet going, are you going to play it? You're going to play the home base one? Not, not, <laughs> not, not playing it. Is this it? No. Is this it? No. Aww. And then I just got bored and walked off. There was that kind of thing where you kind of like, you could see them watching people wandering off. That is one of the curses. Well, of- there is a curse, isn't there? Having one big hit yeah. off your first album. If you only have one hit, that's a bit of a trap, isn't it? Surely. Got to play it, but you know, do you want to yeah. go bury it? Uh, well, it's like.